No ET in the clouds, just lots of bacteria. Maybe. A new study theorizes that the dark splotches on Venus may be a sign that there's life on the planet. Microbial life, that is. Climate models suggest Venus had a habitable climate and liquid water for two billion years before a runaway greenhouse gas effect raised surface temperatures and turned the atmosphere toxic. New research now suggests that microorganisms may be living in the planet's lower cloud layer, which has a stable temperature and more Earth-like atmospheric pressure. Dark patches on Venus could be microbial blooms made of sulfuric acid and other light-absorbing particles, which can persist for days while changing shape and contrast. Certain bacteria on Earth can survive in high altitudes after being swept into the atmosphere. Others have also been known to thrive in extremely harsh environments. Thus far, the probes that have explored Venus have been incapable of distinguishing between organic and inorganic particles. So until a new contraption gets there, no one knows for sure if life does exist on the hottest planet in the solar system. Keep watching for more signs of life in space. Are there aliens on Titan? New research suggests that Saturn's moon Titan may contain the key elements of life. Using data from NASA's Cassini satellite, one study found that Titan's upper atmosphere is home to carbon chain anions. These serve as a stepping stone to more labyrinthine molecules that can develop life. Separately, another study found vinyl cyanide in Titan's atmosphere. Scientists speculate that this forms the outer wall of a cell and protects the biochemistry that takes place within. Titan's atmosphere is one of the most complex observed by astronomers, and these studies further bolster the idea the moon may be home to organic life. Aliens think we're a zoo, apparently. A 1973 theory regarding contact with little green men is making headlines this week. MIT radio astronomer John Ball reckons that aliens aren't interested in Snapchatting with us because they don't want to hinder our evolution as a species aka zoo theory. Basically, Ball reckons that all advanced alien civilizations abide by a space code whereby they don't intercede with Earth until we're developed enough or never. Apparently, there are also intergalactic germaphobes. Interaction with us may end up with them getting a gnarly cosmic infection, and that runs contrary to everything Hollywood. So, screenwriters writing yet another factory blockbuster featuring evil aliens may want to think twice before stereotyping an entire alien species as the villain. Hashtag not all aliens. Anyone for fishing on Enceladus? Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, might be home to some form of subsea alien life. Might being the key word. Scientists looking at data pulled from NASA's Cassini spacecraft may have found how Saturn's ocean moon Enceladus remains geologically active. The research suggests that tidal currents flow through the moon's porous core, where the friction between rocks generate heat that warms the ocean. According to the European Space Agency, this tidal heating is primarily caused by the gravitational pull of Saturn. NASA previously said this particular moon has all the ingredients needed for life to exist. In 2008, the space agency speculated that the deep sea vent theory could apply to life on Enceladus. When applied to Earth, this suggests life originated from chemical, heat, and tidal interactions beneath the seabed. Alien hunters detect radio signals from distant galaxy. Scientists searching out alien life were presented with a new hope last month when their equipment picked this up. This is a radio burst from another galaxy. Writing in the astronomer's telegram, scientists reported 15 fast radio bursts detected from a dwarf galaxy some 3 billion light years from our own. Scientists suggest the bursts may have come from a magnetar, which is a rotating neuron star with a strong magnetic field. Researchers also speculate that the bursts may originate from alien laser technology used to propel and power spacecraft, like wind powers sails on a ship. That theory is similar to Breakthrough Starshot, an initiative aimed at propelling nanocraft to Proxima Centauri with Earth-based lasers. Whatever they come from, researchers say that those signals began traveling from their galaxy over 10 billion years ago, when ours wasn't even 2 billion years old. Or in other words, it happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. 
Interstellar message sent to nearby exoplanet. Hello, is anyone out there? GJ273, a red dwarf, also called Leuton Star, is galactically right around the corner at a mere 12.36 light years away from Mother Earth. Scientists and artists beamed a message to the GJ273 system last month to see if any aliens are listening. The message will only take about a dozen years to arrive. The radio signal included music and math lessons from us to them and was designed for aliens to respond. Some critics, like Stephen Hawking, worry that actively trying to contact ET could alert advanced hostile or resource-seeking aliens, which could have dire consequences for our planet. Don't worry, we'll destroy ourselves first before any dirty alien will get a chance to. But on the bright side, if in 25 years we hear an actual response, wouldn't that be something?